what is the uh, current state of telehealth in uh, the US? Yeah, um, telehealth, as you might imagine, was um, really starting to pick up um, to some degree before COVID, but obviously with COVID and everyone being at home, it's had tremendous growth um, in many, many different areas. And one of the things that I've noticed in talking with different um, MGMA practices and the organization as a whole is, depending on the specialty, it's really having different adoption rates. Um, so obviously in primary health, primary care, um, behavioral health, um, some of those areas have converted almost for their entire patient population during this time to telehealth visits. And um, so I, I think that's been a tr tremendous change and to some degree a really tremendous benefit, for obviously for the practice and for the patients during this time. Um, other specialties that are more surgically and surgical in nature or require more testing, more in-person activity have had um, definitely adoption of telehealth, but not quite at the exact same pace. So, um, so but patients have really, really embraced it, which is great. And I think some of the providers who before may have been a little more hesitant are actually now um, really starting to see it as something they've got to integrate into their practice. Um, payers have also during the time been really um, receptive and many of them waived um, co-payments, at least for COVID related um, conditions during this time. Um, many of them also started paying for some of the, te the telephone and the video visits um, during at the full rates um, during this time as well. And so um, the other thing that was a really positive benefit, I think, as we went through COVID is the regulations relaxed. Um, one of the limitations in the past for telehealth was having to be credentialed in each of the different states. Um, and so that now has allowed for, those have been um, re restricted or relieved, at least for right now. Um, and that has really allowed for particularly some of these larger kind of companies that have multiple primary care physicians to be able to service patients really across the country from any location. And so um, there's also been the ability to use things like Zoom um, or FaceTime and other technology that previously um, weren't, wasn't allowed for, for video visits. And so um, I think that's made it easier for people to get started. Um, and we'll see one of the things we'll be watching as we go forward is how some of those things may change in terms of um, what's allowed regulatory wise. But um, so far, it's been really, really tremendous benefit for the patients um, in many, many of the practices.